In this video, I'm going to talk about a couple of scripts that I wrote to help solve one feature that I, I want to see in zero, zero tier. Specifically, you know, when you connect a peer, they always have access until you manually remove them, for example. But I wanted this to behave more like a VPN where you can have authentication of some sort. So what I did is wrote a couple of scripts and decided to use SSH for authentication. And the reason why I use SSH is because it's a very robust and stable protocol and application as well. And there are many clients with every operating system pretty much that exists out there. And I can handle and manage all the users in the back end using with the Linux. Well, my Linux system to create the user account and then set the you know set a password if I'm going to use password authentication or have them send me a key, which I use in this case. And if you already have two-factor authentication built into SSH or you're already using keys, then you can just pick up where you left off with the solution and just add one additional feature to it. So again, this just helps with um, allowing users to connect for a certain period of time. And once that time expires, then they will automatically be deauthorized. And then they can get back to the network until they re-authenticate. And because I'm using the you know, Linux and SSH for authentication, I can lock an account and they can't log in. So I don't have to write a bunch of extra code to perform tasks that are already being done in the back end maintained by Linux. So I have my Bash Cly ZT script that I wrote here, and I have one peer that's not yet authorized. Okay. So what I did with this solution is I created these two scripts. ZT the auth and auth does ZT. ZT dash the auth, what it does is it I put it in cron.hourly and it runs once an hour and it lists all the peers for my network and it will get the current time correction. It will get the last authorized time for that user and then convert that to epoch. And then it will get the current time and then set 24 hours from the current time. So whenever the last authorized time was, this is going to add X number of hours, in this case, 24 hours. So 24 hours from the last authorized time is when it's going to expire. And then if the current time is greater than the 24 hours that's passed, then they're going to be automatically deauthorized. Okay. And then I have this other script and what it does is it uses iNotify right here, use iNotify to monitor a directory. The directory is completely arbitrary. I just so happen to use a directory called slash activate, which you see right here. So first you want to create that directory, and then you want to change the permissions so that any user can write to it. And I went ahead and set the sticky bit there as well for this directory. And then this is how you run the program and then the directory name. And so you can put whatever directory name you want to in this field here, and I'll just run it in the background, okay? All right, so this is how this works. Within my SSH keys file, I have the force command. So as soon as the user logs in, it's gonna automatically run this command here. And what this command is, is it echoes one, which is completely arbitrary, into this file here, and the file has the name of my particular peer. And so once that peer authenticates and the authentication is successful, it's going to run this command and it's going to close the connection. Because you see here, I have other options that prevents access from the remote system. And so again, I use SSH because it's pretty robust, pretty stable. And SSH keys allows me to allow users to run one single command that's going to then provide them authentication, authorization to my zero tier network. All right, so let's see how this works. We run bash off ZT, and then, and if you run this, it's going to tell you that you need to specify something to watch here. In this case, I notify wait monitors files. So bash and then activate. I'm trying to talk and type at the same time that's not working <laughs> so that's the directory i want to monitor and then i'm just going to run it in the background okay 
And so now that's running with I notify in the background, as you see right here, monitoring this directory for any changes. Now, as soon as the user authenticates and run this command, the script is going to look at this peer ID here and authorize that peer. So let me go ahead and log in here. Got the right password. All right. Now see how it immediately closed my connection right here? And what happened in the background is it authorized my peer so they can access the network. And you see right here, authorized is set to true. And so now if I go back to my Bash Client ZT program and I list my unauthorized users, I currently have none. But if I list all my authorized users, see there's my peer. It now has an IP address and is now on the zero two network. So again, this was a solution to allow me to allow someone first to um, get onto my zero two network, and then after a given period of time, then they are automatically deauthorized, and then they have to reauthenticate to regain access back to my zero two network. And I used SSH again because of its stability and also because I can make use of the Linux backend to manage accounts. So once again, if I want to block a user from logging in, I can deauthorize them. And then I can also lock their, their account so they can't log in via SSH. And also, if you already have SSH installed, you're already using keys, then this is one extra thing that you can do to um, allow the zero to actually work. Another thing is, if you're using two-factor authentication with SSH, that continues to work the same as well. You're just going to add in the SSH key and then that one command that allows the user to uh, authenticate themselves and then get on the zero tier network. Now, you may want to create a separate key for this because you may already have a key for whatever your purpose is. But for this purpose, I would recommend having an SSH server, like in a container, for example. That its only purpose is to authenticate users to your zero two network. No other services running on it, just so you keep it pretty locked down, because you don't want anyone to jump onto your your server and then gain access to your zero tier clients. But of course, you can put in access control rules within a zero tier to mitigate any kind of issues that may occur as a result of it. But SSH accounts on a public server, datapacket.net, and uh, DigitalOcean, they have them for less than five bucks a month, or you can port forward it to your home system, and let that be the SSH server that users can authenticate to. Uh, but I recommend running in a container so that it's the only service that you have running is SSH, nothing else. And the users don't need a shell on your on that, that system. They only need to run that one command via the SSH keys. Okay. So this is just one way to do this, and you know, I had some spare time, and I thought I'd go ahead and get this done and get it out of my head. <laughs> All right, thanks, folks.